Here we have a problem involving a diver, and these type of problem falls under the category of free fall, being object that's moved straight up and down only under the influence of gravity. Why is that important? It's because with gravity, we know that the acceleration due to gravity, little g, it's always 9.81 meter per second square with some amount of variation depending on where you're on Earth, but this is the number we'll use, downwards. And the key thing is that this is constant, right? As long as you're near the surface of the Earth, this acceleration is constant. When we have constant acceleration, this again allows us to use the kinematics equation that we've given to you. And that's principally why the textbook is so obsessed with these particular types of problems. So let's see what we got here. We have a diver that bounces straight up from a diving board. So let's see, there's got to be some kind of a water surface down here and a diving board up here. And then here's your diver. And I think we're tracking where her feet is because just to avoid the added complication of her rolling over the ball or flipping around or whatever it is, we're gonna just track that one point of her assuming that she's rigid all the way throughout. And so she bounces up and eventually she jumps. She's gonna get slowed down by gravity and then comes down like that. And the assumption is that she's completely rigid the whole time she's doing it. So you see how she's not changing shape. Just to keep the math simple, there are ways to treat it, but we're not gonna get into those kind of details. If you read the rest of the question, we're asking about what's the highest point, where's her highest point above the board, but also there's something about when she hits the water. So we're actually interested in two different points in the problem. The label of initial and final gets a little hairy, because it's hard to tell what's the final. So I'm gonna label this at point zero, this at point one, and this at point two. Just so that I don't have my, say my final velocity referring to two different things. Before I get much further, it's good to define a coordinate axis with these kind of sketches just to see what's going on. Let's use Y because it's vertical. And then let's put the y equals zero right here, going positive upwards. So if that's y equals zero, we know that this is 1.80 meters. So then we know y zero is equal to 1.8 meters. We also know that the initial velocity, vo, when she takes off is four meters per second upwards, which is positive. And of course we know that my acceleration is g, so that's gonna be, in this case, negative 9.81 meters per second square because it goes downwards opposite to our direction of our defined positive over here. So to find her highest point above the board. So in part A, we're looking for this delta y here technically from zero to one. That's not necessarily zero second to one second, it's just time zero to some unknown time one. It seems like we're missing something here, but we know that at the top of her trajectory or the path that she travels, she's turning from going positive, going upwards, to going downwards, negative. At the crossover point, V1 is gonna be zero. So that helps us because we basically have everything we need. In this case, we're not given time. So we're probably gonna use this equation. This is of course from zero to one, just to keep everything well labeled so we don't sub in the wrong number by mistake. And so if we want delta y zero to one, and there you go. Now we just sub it in and we find the number. V1 was zero minus four meters per second all squared divided by two. And it's good to know, note that, first of all, that the negative sign and the negative sign here, they're gonna cancel out. And that the unit also works out, right? Because once you square that, you got meter square over second square and you cancel everything out, you are in fact left with meters. Punching that through, you get that the displacement gets you some lengthy numbers. So for A, keeping the three sig figs, her highest point above the board is 0 0.815 meters. Making a note, technically we're talking about her feet's highest point. Just to keep the situation a little simpler, we're talking about specifically the location of her feet. Not her center of gravity, not her head, not anywhere else. Okay, moving on.
part B. How long a time are her feet in the air? So we're now relating and talking about how much time passes from zero all the way to two. And there's absolutely no requirement that you consider any other point in between. You don't have to go through one first. You can directly relate zero to two because they're both points on the same trajectory with constant acceleration. So in that sense, whatever speed it was going at, or velocity is going at, at time one is no longer important. We're now looking for something about the time between zero to two, that delta t. Although we do have one more piece of information, we know that when sh her feet hits the water, she does in fact have a position of zero meters. So that's likely meaning we are going to use this equation. And technically all the delta t should have the zero to two here, but I'm just gonna make things a little bit cleaner and not write those in. So here we're trying to solve for time, which unfortunately has delta t and delta t square here. So that points to us needing the quadratic formula. But let's sub in the numbers first. And we have it basically already in the form fit for the quadratic formula because we got the zero on the one side. And this will be my a, the thing in front of my t square. This will be my b, this will be my c. This might be a bit of refresher for you guys, but your quadratic formula, right? Given this form, we know that. With the plus or minus, we get two separate answer. And you can work that out on your calculator. I'm not gonna bore you with all that detail, but we got two answers. One being positive, one being negative. What do they mean? Well, if you look at the whole trajectory, right? The positive clearly is the one that as you go on, when is the next time it'll hit y equals zero at this point. But then this negative, what it means is if you were to extrapolate the movement back backwards in time, fictitiously, that's the time where it would end up at zero again, or would have quote unquote started at y equals zero. But that's not the one we're interested in. We want this one. So clearly that's the time we're after. So her feet are in the air for 1.14 seconds. Then for part C, we're after what's my V2. So we could use the time from part B, but what if we made a mistake there, right? So let's try to avoid that and use this equation instead, avoiding that time. And of course, we can directly relate all the way from point zero to point two, not needing to go through point one. So this delta y here is actually y two minus y zero. So if we were to solve for all that, just make it a big long chain. Again, signs is gonna matter and hopefully it's gonna everything's gonna work out for us. So double checking the units, we have meters times meters divided by second square, meters per second both square. So they do in fact give you meter square second square. Then we take the square root, knowing of course when we introduce the square root, we have to put in the plus or minus. And in our case, we can actually take negative case because when she's entering the wall, she's going down. So to reflect that in our final answer, we can say that her feet hits the water when her velocity is 7.16 meters per second downwards. It's better to state the downwards explicitly rather than the negative because we have actually defined the upwards to be positive. It's not inherent in the question itself. So hopefully this was a good refresher on how to make a good sketch of the problem, defining your positive, listing out the various knowns and unknowns, knowing that you can relate any two points along the trajectory, doesn't have to necessarily go through the top, and a refresher on the quadratic formula.